review. Today's review is one of which I didn't really expect to be making. However, two weeks ago at the time of filming, I met John Barrowman at Collectomania 24. I'm not going to lie, ever since I've been on a little bit of a John Barrowman hype, which explains why I'm sat down reviewing the lives of Captain Jack today. So this came out on the week of me meeting him, so it's kind of destiny in a way, even though I didn't actually expect to meet him a week before actually meeting him, because it was all a little bit of a last minute decision, but a really exciting one at that. Just in case if you're not aware, the lives of Captain Jack is basically a little bit of a spin-off of a spin-off. It's not related to Torchwood in any way. All four of the stories in this release do not relate to Torchwood. There is no references. It's basically a spin-off based on Captain Jack. It's a little bit like those episodes in Torchwood, which I do believe sort of delved into Captain Jack's past. However, still leaves quite a lot of it a little bit of a mystery. And this one goes into that a little bit further. We find out Captain Jack's name and things like that. We go into the time agency a little bit more and sort of makes me respect a little bit more of Captain Jack because I now know a bit more of his life, which is good. So as always, in the description below, I will leave the link to go and buy this release from the Big Finish website. It's currently out now at the pre-order price and it will stay at the pre-order price until August 31st, 2017. So if you're watching this review after that it'll be at the larger price i do believe of 30 pounds or 35 pounds the current pre-order price for the physical edition is 25 pounds as opposed to the 20 that it normally is and the download is 20 pounds so as i say if you want to save a little bit of cash and you do want this release then go and buy it now because that's kind of logical because it's cheaper and just in case if you're not aware the general format for this release is a little bit like the dark eyes format or doom coalition or classic doctors new monsters where you essentially have four whole stories i do believe that it is in your standard case as per usual and they are around one hour long give or take a few minutes here and there depending on the story as of the majority of big finish releases if an episode wants more time it can get more time so the first episode is the year after i died written by guy adams then we have episode two which is wednesday for beginners by james goss episode three one enchanted evening by james goss once again and then episode four month 25 by guy adams and these episodes they aren't exactly related there is a few parts that do relate to each other in some way. In fact, this creature that gets related to on several occasions called the Harvester, which if you've listened to this release, you will know what they are. But yeah, it is a rather a rather nice series because they are kind of standalone and it's good because it's through sort of different aspects of his life. We get one episode that is set at literally about a year or so after parting of the Ways and Bad Wolf, which was a really interesting one. And then you even get some others that go further back into the time agency days before he lost his memories. So going into the cast list for this release, we have quite a lot actually from the new series. So we have John Barrowman as Captain and Jack Hartness, of course. We have Russell Torvey as Midshipman Alonzo Frame from, of course, Voyage of the Damned. Then you have Camille Cadori as Jackie Tyler, Sarah Douglas as Vorchia Tria, and then quite a lot of other people as well, which I'll probably get to throughout this review, including Katie Manning, not as Joe Grant, but as somebody called Mother Nothing, who is an interesting villain, to say the least, that is rather pantomime, and to be quite honest, Katie Manning plays it absolutely excellently. So going on to the first story, The Year After I Died by Guy Adams. Not going to lie, this was the main sort of flagship for this one because I really was interested by what they were doing this story. It's set directly after Parting of the Ways, or at least sort of within the last year or so after Parting of the Ways. So Captain Jack is sort of getting to the grips to the fact that he sort of can survive things. He doesn't know how. He knows that the Doctor and Rose are sort of involved and he doesn't even know if they're going to be sort of seen again. And then even throughout this story, we have him testing the fact of can I sort of survive things? Am I immortal? Things like that. He doesn't in fact know. Very, sort of not exactly relaxed, but he is a very cautious version of Captain Jack, which I think is a rather interesting one, and one of which that we've not in fact seen, to show that the death has actually impacted him and sort of changed him in a way, which is nice. Alex are not in this one. However, we get a little bit of a continuation of that darker feel, sort of that dystopian future that we do in fact get in Parting of the Ways. So the idea of Satellite 5 and the Game Station is not exactly returning to that format. However, we do have a few references that they've used part of that ship to build this new version of the ship and to be quite honest a lot of those elements from Parting of the Ways and Bad Wolf that I absolutely adored are continued within this story and it shows that now the Daleks are gone pretty much the humans have now took over once again and they're pretty much doing exactly the same thing and it shows the way that even though the Daleks are evil to be quite honest the humans are just as bad to some extent because they are essentially doing the same thing which I love this episode for I think Guy Adams really did something that sort of hit here when it came to Doctor Who usual to have the first episode of the series actually go to the very top of the list but I'm going to get that out there straight away and say this is probably the episode for this release that I really do like and this one alone is probably a very good example of what Captain Jack can do and I think it definitely gets to grips with his character. We meet somebody called Silo who is somebody on this version of Earth that is sort of recovering from Parting of the Ways where the majority of the planet is now being killed by the Daleks and she's wanting to find out what has happened. She is a reporter now that of course Satellite 5 was the 
the main control of the media and the news and controlled absolutely everything that happened. All modern day journalism has now returned back to the scene and people are going out and reporting on actual things again. And she's still sort of new to the job. She's going searching for Captain Jack because she knows that he was a part of the big thing in Satellite 5 and the surviving of the rest of the human race and the Daleks eventually being defeated. So we have a little bit of sort of, sort of a little bit of a fan in there. She's the equivalent of Osgood to an extent. Was Captain Jack around even recording him a little bit like a vlogger to an extent trying to capture everything and we have that theme going all the way throughout the story and then we have more of that Captain Jack coming through in a way she sparks that older version of him when she goes into danger Captain Jack then saves her so the majority of the story especially to start with is in fact focused on Silo more than Captain Jack which I think is something that I didn't expect however I quite liked it because it really introduced this new version of Captain Jack a lot easier basically we have this doctor slash sort of physician type person who is doing little bits of operations here and there on these people that want to go to another planet to start a new life. They are essentially asylum seekers. So we have several themes throughout this story of asylum seeking, refugees, things like that. And basically, as soon as they go on this ship, they no longer own themselves and the people above now own them. And we have this very rich person who is female and she basically controls absolutely everybody. And a really interesting theme of this one is they pick and choose different people after knowing what they are, what their characteristics are, and they get drawn to sort of this operating table and then they are essentially operated on. For example, we get to introduce to this person in the story, I do believe called Alfie or Malfi, I can't remember what one, but yeah, he's one of those ones that in fact is a part of the story and then they go, well, he's got nice eyes, let's take him from him. So they are essentially a body snatcher style of theme, which I really like when it comes to Doctor Who. It's been used quite a lot in the past. I think that I just love the format and I love that idea. And I think that for Doctor Who, it works perfectly, and especially for Torchwood as well. This box set is a little bit of a middle ground for that. At the very end of the story, we get the revelation that Captain Jack can't die. He figures this out for himself, as once again, he's surprised at the fact that he's actually survived. So I think that it's definitely a learning curve for Captain Jack, and one of which that starts off the series incredibly well. This day for beginners, to be quite honest, has been on my timeline quite a lot, a lot more than other releases that I've seen from Big Finish recently, which is a surprise. It's Captain Jack and Jackie Tyler, and it's set on the Powell estate. However, it's a little bit unusual. Of course, it's Dr. Light with it being Captain Jack, and we have a lot more character traits of Jackie. We have a lot more development with her. We have how that she's been left behind, even though we got to see that in the series. We have her dealing with the concept that her daughter is going out into space, and I think that that alone, given her more development. I think that Camille Kadori, especially for this one, she was on top form. It is incredibly sort of, not exactly a pantomime, but it is incredibly laughter here and there. You know, both of them together are very funny. They sort of bounce off each other incredibly well, and surprisingly, they do work together. I could essentially see them together for a whole series. I think that part of them really do have something that works nicely. I think just seeing that delve into Jackie's life and what she does when Rose is away just makes her life feel a lot more real, even though the Tylers are probably the most developed family that we've had so far on the new series of Doctor Who. This episode is the first reference that we have to the Harvesters, which are basically these alien force which focuses on one person that is incredibly important and tries to draw others to them. And this story, you have the revelation where Jack thinks that it's him because he can't die. And by this point, it's sort of halfway through his life, sort of the Captain Jack that we know in the actual TV show itself. He's been living through Victorian times and things like that, going literally through Earth's history. You have this moment that is incredibly egotistical because he thinks that the Harvesters are trying to focus down on him because he's the most important person in the world however it turns out that it's not him it's Jackie Tyler and we do have this lovely moment and to be quite honest the whole story is littered with lovely moments I think the way that Jackie is in this one she's just so Jackie Tyler she's so happy even in alien situations one of which where the power state is essentially extracted from the entirety of humanity and we have this fog that is making a very creepy and I think that if it was visually in the actual tv show it would be a very spooky one and something of which it sort of reminds me of silence in the library and that alternate dimension that we sort of got used to within the library in that story. I just think that it's a rather sort of odd doomsday style of format I think. And something that I found with this one throughout I was constantly guessing how they're going to get out of this, what they're going to do next. And I think that no matter what you think, oh they've sorted it and then something else happens, oh they've done this, now it's fine. And then you think, hang on, no, we're only halfway through, so more things must happen. It definitely keeps you on the spot. A really good listen. It's not exactly the most complicated story in the world, and the same applies for the rest of the stories in this release, which is good for the new series viewer who is more used to the simpler new series formats. I think it's a good balance though, however, between Doctor Who and Torchwood. On the outside, you think, 
with Captain Jack and Jackie Tyler. Why? Why is Jackie Tyler in this? However, once you get into the story, it definitely is just a bit of fun. And I think that you can't really comment on that with Big Finish quite often. I think that their stories are quite serious since we are doing this because it's what is happening. It's a part of the plot. However, this one sort of lets loose on those reins a little bit and goes, yeah, let's just have an hour of fun. Even though it's a serious situation, it's still fun and still very sort of atmospheric we have happy music here and there and it is it's a really fun one one enchanted evening which is set i do believe near enough directly after when the doctor introduces captain jack to alonso in the end of time so that is set in fact a little bit as well after the voyage of the damned so we have quite a lot of backlog for this one sort of say that this one is maybe the weakest of the box set not to say that, that is a bad thing i just think that this one is once again a little bit more laid back we have a relationship between alonso and captain jack it's really nice to see that that has been developed on of because this one does, and I do believe that it's in fact been quoted on Gear Times or something like that. There was an extract that was in fact released for Gear Times. I think that it's very nice to see Doctor Who identifying with that because that is something that Torchwood very much did do. So yeah, this one once again continues that Torchwood feel. It is essentially if Doctor Who did Torchwood, we have a few relationship elements in there, especially towards the start of the story. We get right in there with Captain Jack and Alonso sort of getting to know each other. And then we have them going back to the room or the cabin that Alonso would of course be staying in and i think that throughout this one we have them definitely sort of building on that relationship alonso especially he has a few moments in there recovering from the titanic and the fact of how that stress has been left on him pretty much a lot of people dying and he sort of feels a little bit to blame for that even for this one he's put straight back into that once again of having another alien threat this time once again we have an alien force which we don't really delve into that much we have mother nothing once again played by katie manning who is your stereotypical sort of my whole world is dead i'm good to make everybody else miserable style of alien and wanting to steal things and this spaceship especially has a lovely very nice and very large diamond engine which of course once traded in that will be worth an absolute fortune and it constantly refers to it as a shiny thing and funny elements between captain jack and mother nothing i think the relationship that they have a little bit pantomime i'll definitely sum this one up as a little bit of a pantomime story the script itself is rather unusual and i do think that halfway through i was thinking what exactly is this story however it's just nice to have a relaxing one once again i think that the whole box set as a whole is a nice relaxing listen and especially with this one seeing that relationship because it is mainly focused around alonzo and jack even though they're split off i think the relationship that they have especially near the very end where we have mother nothing in fact saying who would you rather see shot alonzo watching captain jack being shot or captain jack seeing alonzo being killed and i think that the relationship considering that they've only just known each other is a very strong one and then even towards the very end where alonzo does something because he's not aware of Captain Jack's immortal powers. It really does. It's an emotional moment because you do in fact think, hang on, is this it for Alonso? Once again, it really keeps you guessing. And at the very end, you have an emotional moment, which I didn't quite expect. I don't know quite what to think of it, but we have them once again being split off, which I can't imagine what it would be like if they stayed together. But yeah, it's one of those things that again keeps you guessing much like Wednesday for beginners. I, as I say, probably one of the weakest of the box set. However, I still quite liked it have the final one for the box set month 25 which is definitely one that i don't really want to go into that much because you need to go into this one with an open mind not really knowing what's going on basically this is the time agency i do believe that this is maybe the youngest version of captain jack that we've ever seen unless that goes into more of the time agency and torch within the actual tv show i'm still yet to finish that i think i'm midway through series two i believe i can't really remember i had exams so i completely forgot to continue that marathon but yeah um, i think with this one we definitely have an interesting version of captain jack where we learn his real name which i'm not going to be saying in this review but we do in fact learn that and we get a little bit of an odd side to him because you have him there but you don't at the same time it's not the captain jack that i'm used to it's a different version of him before essentially that he gets his mind wiped sort of or at least a version of him that essentially doesn't exist anymore it really does show that captain jack has in fact changed over time captain jack coming to terms with the fact that the time agency has stolen memories from him i do believe about two years or so something like that and then of course we see the rest of the impact of that within empty child and the doctor dances so it definitely follows into that very well i like to think that this one is essentially the gap filler it goes in and does those little things that we've heard of in the tv show however it's not really delved into that too much i know a few people may not like that for this one i think that especially some that are more eager get into captain jack i think that may want to keep this part of his life a little bit more under wraps and not really know what goes on essentially sort of the class of time agents 
really sort of joking and mocking him in a way, essentially for him being disposable because they can do whatever they want to him because he's just there and it wouldn't really matter if he leaves. He's not the biggest one in the class, he's not the most sort of intelligent one in the class to an extent. I'm sort of comparing this to school in a way, sort of. I think that it's a very, it's an odd twist and makes me sort of believe in Captain Jack a little bit more because this other version of him that is very confident, very out there, he knows that he's amazing pretty much. He admits at several points throughout this story that he is an amazing person and itself is based around the fact that he thinks he's amazing and even the way that they resolve it is definitely very self-contained. The way that we have him essentially sort of not exactly creating a duplicate of himself but basically he has somebody that looks like him and they sort of twist around things and make one version of Jack into another and sort of distract other people to an extent not to sort of reveal what goes on but as I say the way that it's resolved is very Captain Jack and once again backs up the point that he basically absolutely loves himself which is very relevant. He's basically coming to terms with the fact that his whole life is falling apart. He's got sort of a part of him that is essentially in a little bit of a mess. I would like to say a midlife crisis because he doesn't really know what's going on. He's aware that parts of him have been sort of taken away. He feels exposed because of that. Once again, I want to call this one a little bit of a character piece, but that said, the entirety of the box set is pretty much a character piece because it is essentially all based on Captain Jack. And I just... I think it's definitely well deserved. I think that even though Captain Jack in the TV show is possibly one of the most padded out new series characters that we've ever got, and definitely one of the most padded out Stephen Moffat creations that we've ever got, because he did write him to start with in series one, of course. He's the one that did start him off, and then Russell T. Davies went on and adapted him to Torchwood. I still feel that there is a lot of him that we could get used to, and especially a lot of the stuff from the past that we could have got into. Compared to the other Guy Adams one on this box set being the first one the year after I died, I definitely preferred that one. One more than this one but that said I did like the first one quite a lot so that really doesn't mean much I think that with this one it's a strong script a very good character piece that goes into how generally things have affected Captain Jack it's arguably a little bit of an emotional one because we do as I say get that exposed version of him which is something that is very interesting to listen to the main thing for this one is the mystery behind it and that is the main thing for Captain Jack as a whole the main mystery behind him so if you're interested in Captain Jack if you like Torchwood if you've enjoyed the Big Finish audio so far relating to Torchwood if you enjoyed Torchwood 1 as well which was another spin-off of a spin-off of Torchwood then this one may be one for you as I say if you're just generally a Captain Jack fan as a whole you get to know a lot more about him his past his present his future as well I just love the way that this box set as I say keeps you guessing and definitely cherry picks certain parts of his life and I can imagine if they did another box set of this they would probably go on to cherry pick even further and go what happens when he was this age what happens when he was in this setting I think that generally that works well and every single story has a multiple different setting meaning it's quite hard to get bored I think that no matter what an uh, issue say that you have with Doom Coalition especially with the later half of it is if you don't like one setting then you're sort of stuck with it especially sort of throughout Doom Coalition 3 where you have two episodes that essentially set in the same period and the same same sort of setting for the majority so with this it constantly jumps if you're bored of one bit it moves quite quickly onto another bit so that is quite good once again a new series format definitely balancing out the difference between Torchwood and Doctor Who as we have a few more adult elements in there a few more sexual references as well once again this is like the midpoint between Torchwood and Doctor Who which is something that I've wanted to see for quite a while and it's good that James Goss and Guy Adams have really got that right they've especially got this right and Captain Jack as a whole as well and as I say if you're a Captain Jack fan this one is definitely one for you however this box set won't be one for everyone so that as I said at the start of this review in the description below I will leave everything that you need to know about this release and I guess I will see you all in the next Big Finish review thanks for watching this review if you enjoyed it please do give it a big like please subscribe if you're not already if you've got any questions please do leave them below and be sure to answer them at some point in the near future thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time so thanks for watching and bye for now